Hi. Um, so this is just going to be a quick, uh, short lightning talk on an open source project that I'm excited about called NeoVim. Uh, first off, show of hands, is there are there any um, Vim users in here? Yeah, awesome. Have you looked at NeoVim yet? Yeah, sweet. Cool. So then I'll just ask you questions. Because <laughs> I really don't know a whole lot about it. I've been using it full time for a while, and it's really nice. Um, so NeoVim. <laughs> So why something new? What's wrong with the regular Vim that we all have on our Macs or on our machines? Really nothing. It works fine. Um, it's been around. It's been working great for 20 plus years. Um, but it has accumulated a lot of cruft in those 20 plus years. The code base is over 300,000 lines of scary uh, C89, C89 code. I stole that directly from the NeoVim site, so if it's true, I hope that that's where I got it from. Um, and all of it is, comes down to uh, one guy who maintains it, Bram Mulliner. If you've ever opened Vim, you've seen him. You've seen him uh, urging you to donate to Uganda. So uh, he's a great guy. Um, he's the one who manages Vim, and he's been doing it um, the whole time. Um, there's also lots of platform-specific code in there. So Vim literally runs everywhere. You can download an app on your iPhone. You can download an app on everything, and Vim will probably run there. Your toaster probably has a Vim implementation, and all of that is part of the, the code um, cruft that is in there. And uh, another big gripe, and this is probably the biggest benefit to looking at NeoVim for me, is that in Vim, all plugin code runs synchronously. So it actually pauses the editor uh, whenever it has to do something, which kind of gets me out of the zone a little bit while I wait for my um, linter to finish linting the file or something. So what does NeoVim do better? V uh, NeoVim is not a rewrite of Vim. It's not trying to... Um, to start from scratch and create a Vim clone. It's trying to take the Vim source and aggressively refactor it. Um, and it wants to take a lot of that platform specific code and replace it with libuv. Has anyone heard of libuv? Yeah, cool. libuv is um, the, the tool that Node uses to run everywhere. So it's all of the bindings for each specific platform. They can just write the Node code or the NeoVim code to those bindings and then libuv make sure that it works on all of the platforms that it supports. So they really want to try and simplify the maintenance and split the work up between a number of developers so that um, it's easier to work with, it's easier to maintain, and it's easier to accept patches because multiple people will be responsible for those patches. And then with that, it wants to provide a new plugin architecture um, based on co-processes. So they can run um, outside of Vim and then report back. They can run in uh, and be written in any language that you would like. And it, it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be a language that the editor supports. So it doesn't have to be something like Ruby or Python or whatever. It can be anything. So if you want to install NeoVim, you can do that pretty easily. Um, it is alpha. I should mention that. Uh, I will mention that again. Um, but if you're on OS X, you can get it from Homebrew. You just have to tap um, NeoVim slash NeoVim, and then in just install head uh, to get the latest version of it. Uh, and then you can get it in Ubuntu slash unstable on the apt-get repository. Um, so it, it is very unstable. Uh, it is very stable, but it's very alpha, too. And then Windows is extremely experimental. I think they only recently added that. Um, I've never tried that, so be careful. Um, what else do you need to get started with it? That's it. Once you have it installed, it's just NVim. Um, so you can have it living right alongside your regular Vim. And that's kind of what got me to uh, try it out in the first place is um, if it failed, because it is very alpha software, if it failed, then I can just quickly switch back and not lose a day of product productivity. So um, that's pretty nice. But like I said, there are dragons in it. It is alpha code. There are some things, uh, now that I've upgraded to LCAP, that I'm noticing that I haven't pinpointed it on the other nightly things that I'm using, but something is causing problems to where my computer crashes every night. Um, it might be, it's probably not Vim or NeoVim, but it's definitely something. But I just wanted to point out that it is totally alpha software. So if you run into problems, especially on platforms like Windows, um, just be aware of that. Um, but I have been using it for probably two months now, full time, 
and I have really not had any problems other than when I upgraded to LCAP. And if you have an, a, a complicated VimRC for your uh, normal Vim um, already set up, you can just symlink it to nvimrc and symlink your vim directory in your home directory to .nvim. And then uh, I recently just did this. I aliased vim to, uh, to nvim instead of typing nvim all the time. So now I'm just using it full time. Um, you don't have to do that last step. But if you wanted to just get started and have the exact same environment set up, you can do that by just clone, either copying or symlinking your vimrc. And then when you open up nvim, I'd be surprised if you notice a difference because it all just looks the same. But let's make a few small changes just to take advantage of some of the cool things that NVIM gives us. <clears throat> the first one um, is Syntastic. This is a plugin for Vim. Has anyone ever used that? Yeah? It's a plugin. It does uh, things like linting or style checking of your code. So uh, by default, when you install it, it works with a number of different things. If I'm primarily a JavaScript developer, so it works with JS Hint uh, or TS Lint or JSCS, um, JavaScript code style. It also works with, um, what's one in Ruby? Um, RuboCop. Yeah, that's it. Uh, it'll work with that as well. Um, so what it does is when you save the file, it will just check that file, run linting on it, and then if there are any problems that are uh, that are there in the code, like not aligning with the, the style guide that you have or uh, you know missing some, some easy syntax things, uh, it'll highlight the lines that have those problems so that you can easily do that. <clears throat> the problem is, is that Syntastic works great, but depending on the file size, it can take like a second or two to complete. Um, so if I'm working on a, a file that is, you know, a thousand lines long or longer, I should probably refactor that file. But it's um, causing me problems because it will slow down my editor every time I hit save, which I kind of just always do, and I'll hit save multiple times. Um, it just freezes my editor. So I took a look at this plugin called NeoMake. And NeoMake is pretty much syntastic, but it supports the asynchronous plugin architecture that NeoVim has. Now, you can make this switch. And if you're using the same VimRC for both your NeoVim instance and Vim, you can switch syntastic to NeoMake. And NeoMake will work in synchronous mode when it's in Vim. So really no difference <clears throat> there. There are uh, configuration differences and things. But it's really pretty simple. So that's all it does, is it will just um, do the, the type checking or syntax checking for um, your applications. Another one is Vim Plug. Um, previously, I was using a plugin called um, Vundle, which allows me to list in my VimRC the plugins that I want to install. And I have like 45 plugins or something at this point. Um, and all it does is it, you list all of those, and you can list them by their, their uh, GitHub repo URLs. So you can just say, uh, for example, fugitive is Tim Pope or T Pope slash fugitive. You can just list T Pope slash fugitive in your VimRC, and then run bundle install, and it will go install that for you. Problem is, it's really slow when it goes and installs that, because it does everything synchronously and uh, can run into problems. Vimplug is very similar to that, but it's um, more lightweight. And it supports a few more um, configurations so that we can control what happens when a plugin installs, um, when the plugin should actually be triggered in Vim. So like if I'm only working in JavaScript, don't load my Ruby plugins, because why would I need those loaded? Uh, but if I open a Ruby file, then get them loaded in. So Vim plug can handle all of that. And it does it all asynchronously. So you can do things like this. In your VimRC, just add in plug statements. And so I'm going to load in Vim Fugitive, Vim Snipmate, Vim Repeat. And then this one, um, I'm going to load in NerdTree, which is a file drawer. But I don't want NerdTree to be loaded right at the beginning, because I'm trying to get Vim to load up as fast as possible. We don't want it to turn into something like WebStorm. We want it to be fast. So um, I can just say on NerdTree toggle. So whenever that command is triggered in Vim or NeoVim, then load NerdTree. And it will go load it and then run it. Another one is um, in, if your plugin has to do some kind of build step, uh, for a lot of the Node plugins that I use, um, when you install it, you actually have to go into the plugins directory inside of your Vim directory and uh, run npm install or run make or run something like that. You can tell it to uh, build that right in here. So once it installs, tell it to run npm install or something else, uh, and it can do that. 
and then it will just work. So it will go and it will load all of these for us uh, immediately. So let me just show a quick example of that. If I have vim here, well, oops, in vim, um, and I can just say plug update, and it's just going to immediately go, and it is um, trying to get pull from every one of these repos to update everything, and it does it, and it did it in four seconds. Uh, I don't have Vundle installed anymore, but it would take around 30 to 40 seconds to do the same thing. Uh, and it did that for, how many plugins do I have? A lot. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, there was no updates at the, in this case. And there's more. Um, NeoVim also has a terminal emulator built in so that you can open up a terminal instance inside of a Vim buffer and use that. So in this screenshot, I've got uh, my dot files open or my VimRC open on the left, and then I opened up a buffer and have a terminal on the right. So if I do that, I can just say um, open up my dot files, for example, or my uh, VimRC, and then I can just split and then I could just type colon terminal. And now I have a full terminal where I can do anything in here. I can list the files that I have. Um, I can run Vim inside of NeoVim uh, and continue this, the cycle um, and keep going from there. So there's a lot that you can do. This um, might be a replacement for Tmux, if you're familiar with that. I'm using Tmux right here. I have my Tmux bar down at the bottom. I don't use the terminal too much in Vim. Um, it is nice for things like if you want to, um, trying to theme this towards Ruby, if you wanted to run your, uh, what's the test? R RSpec. If you wanted to run your RSpec test, you could map that to a key and then have it open up a buffer on the right or at the bottom, run the RSpec test right there, give you the output, and then close and do it right within Vim without ever having to leave, without ever having to switch panes to another Tmux pane or do anything like that because that can take a little while to load. So it can be pretty fast. And so... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, question. Do you play the replace Tmux, or do you still use Tmux? I still use Tmux. Um, I'm more familiar with the the commands. It looks less cool to me, I, I, or less uh, pretty to me, I guess, like because it has all of these end of line characters. My thing isn't working. Uh, all of these end of line characters in there, and um, I kind of script my Tmux session, so I'm still kind of in that. That mode I w for for work stuff, I have everything scripted out, so I just run a command, and the server startup that I need to start, it opens Vim in the directory I needed to open, opens the files that I need, does everything for me, uh, and I haven't fully figured out how to do that with within Vim yet. Question. Um, first off, your shirt is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bet to wear it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, and um, from the standpoint, of probably at least developed the developers. Here, um, could you tell me why this is awesome? I feel like it's awesome, but if you could just explain why, like, what exactly it does, and then why it is, uh, um, you know, better than what currently exists. Yeah. So you mean as opposed to like Vim, or as opposed to like other editors like Sublime and? Okay. Um, so the the big thing is. Uh, what I touched on before for, for NeoVim to Vim, like the, the asynchronous stuff is, is the biggest win for me because things are a lot faster. I can actually show um, an example of that. If I just open up a, a file in Vim, I'll just open up array util or array sync.ts. This is a TypeScript file and I'll hit run and now I'm hitting the J key and it kind of paused for a second, but everything is okay. Now, if I open up tslint and I go in and make um, my quote marks, right now I'm forcing them to be single. If I change my style, oops, to be double instead, and then go back and I hit save, and now I hit down, down. It took a second. It was still pretty fast because this is a short file, but it, it took a second. Now, uh, NeoMake brought up these little pieces here, and it's saying that it should be a double quote for both of those. Um, it was pretty slow, and that was in Vim. Now, if I open up in Vim and run the same thing, 
it's almost immediately that it pops up and, and does that. And again, this is only a 36 line file. If I have a really big file and a lot of errors in it that it has to go through, it's going to be a lot, a, a lot slower in Vim. But it's not really going to slow me down because I can still work in Vim, in or I can still work in NeoVim, and then when the errors are ready to be put in there, it, they'll just get put in there. So it's a lot faster in that regard. And then uh, for Vim as an editor or a Vim-like editors. Um, I started using this probably three plus years ago, um, full time, and I, are you uh, I'm mostly doing. This is a TypeScript file, but I'm mostly doing either TypeScript or JavaScript, um, and it works for that because there's not a lot of features that I feel um, editors or uh, like full IDEs give me for files like this. I don't really need something to autocomplete everything for me. Um, I, you know, the, the syntax checking is pretty much enough for me in this. And um, like there's a whole, like Vim is a, a modal editor, so there are different modes that you go in. Right now I'm in normal mode, but if I hit the I key, then I'm in insert mode, and now I can start typing into the file. And hitting escape gets me out of that. Then I can use the keys to move around in there instead of actually typing. So it, it's a whole thing to save me minutes of productivity a year. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And no arrow keys. And no arrow keys, yes. I use HJKL for arrows instead. Yeah. It loads immediately. And when you use something like Vimplug, you can get it down to like, you know, sub 10 milliseconds to load everything in uh, if you configure it correctly. And so we kind of play around with that at work. It's, it's pretty fun. But we get made fun of a lot too. We make fun of other IDEs. It's it's a fun little holy war that we have. <laughs> yeah. So as a NeoVim user, I, I've been tempted by the heresy in uh, Emacs. Yeah. Um, I'm curious if you think that NeoVim brings Vim closer to Emacs in scriptability. Or sure. Because, uh, or if you feel like it's basically just I, I've never used Emacs, so I'll throw that out there. Um, what is the joke? It's a great operating system, but not a great editor. If it's bringing it to this closer towards Emacs, then it's adding a decent operating system to a awesome editor instead. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I've never used uh, Emacs, so I, I can't really comment. But you know, adding in things like a terminal emulator inside of that is adding a lot of additional functionality that has never existed in there. It's still not part of my workflow. I don't know if you use it at all. Uh, like the terminal or anything. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know. It's, uh, it probably is, but I, I couldn't comment. Okay. Fair. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Give it up for Nick.